We've had three banks fail since last Friday. Why did that happen? Because of mismanagement of money. Who mismanaged the money? I contend it was mismanaged by our government and the officials we have running our government. We had a pandemic in which we threw $9 trillion into our economy, which went to SPACs and and IPOs, which flooded Silicon Valley Bank with money, and they then had to turn around and invest it. Yeah, maybe they did the wrong thing by investing in long-term securities, but who turned around then and made their long-term securities worthless that put them in jeopardy? Well, that was Jerome Powell because he gave investors a better plan place to put their money than in the Silicon Valley Bank. He gave them treasuries at 5%. That's what caused the banks to fail. We fired the wrong people, and we need to correct that. That's what I want to get into in this video. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. I want you to put yourself in the position of the manager of the Silicon Valley Bank in California. You're in the hub of where IPOs and, and software companies and big tech companies are being born, and they're coming and they're needing financing. And you're, you've been doing it for, for 40 years, and everything is going fine, and the auditors come in on a regular basis and check your books, and they say you're just doing fine. And then all of a sudden, the world turns upside down. Because of a pandemic, um, your business is stopped and the money flow coming in slows down, but you've invested in these long-term securities. And then the government turns around and says, hey, the interest rates were zero. We we created this, this wonderful situation for you, but we're going to change it because interest rate, because inflation's going up and we need to hold it down. So what we're going to do is we're going to make eggs more expensive in the store. We're going to make gasoline more expensive. We're going to make it so mom can't buy a new backpack for her kids to go to school. Maybe they can't pay the rent, but we're going to bring inflation under control, which we created by putting money into the market a year and a half earlier, and which was then amplified by the fact that the supply chains were broken. And that was caused because we allowed that to happen over the preceding 20 years. But the that's too bad, bankers. We're going to raise interest rates and those securities that you bought over the last five years that have a lower rate than what we're charging, we're putting you out of business. We're going to force your people. We're going to give them a reason to take the money out of your bank and buy federal treasuries. That's what we're going to do. And we don't give a damn about what happens to you. And who was the head of this? Who was leading that? That was Jerome and Janet. They're the ones who put this on them. Look, watch this. This is a very good explanation of exactly what happened to, to Silicon Valley Bank. Watch this. The Silicon Valley Bank collapsed on March 10 after a run on deposits doomed the tech-focused lenders' plans to raise fresh capital. This prompted US regulators to step in with emergency measures, including seizing another bank three days later in a bid to ease fears that depositors might pull their money from other lenders. WSJ banking reporter Rachel Ensign explains how this crisis unfolded and what could happen next. During the pandemic, Silicon Valley Bank had gotten all of these deposits. Their deposits tripled. It was a huge, huge, huge influx. And they did what banks do. They took some of the deposits and made loans, but they also invested a lot of them in securities, which are pretty safe. Some issues had been bubbling under the surface at Silicon Valley Bank since the Federal Reserve started raising rates. When rates rose, the bonds fell in value. It's not a big problem for you unless you have to go and sell the bonds. But deposits started leaving the bank faster than they anticipated. And they had to sell their bonds and take a very big loss. The bank made an announcement on Wednesday night that it needed to raise capital and was planning to do that the next day. The investors completely freaked out, sold off the stock, and then a bank run started 
where people tried to withdraw $42 billion in deposits just in that one day. And by Friday morning, it was seized by regulators. The regulators have responded in a way that they're hoping stems the panic. The Fed said, we're going to be offering this lending facility that's a backstop. We're going to be ensuring all of the deposits effectively of this bank that failed. The collapse matters because it could have broader economic effects. There was the risk that this panic would spread to other parts of the banking system. We saw some really significant news with some of the banks that investors were most concerned about last week. Most notable, Signature Bank, a New York-based bank, was also seized on Sunday night. It is the third largest bank failure in U.S. history. And First Republic put out a statement saying they'd gotten some extra money from the Federal Reserve and also from J.P. Morgan. They're hoping that that reassures their investors and their depositors. The key thing to watch for is, is the panic over? That's the big question. Do people stop pulling their money out? Do investors and customers kind of, are they reassured in the way that the government would like them to be? Okay, so what happens now? Well, as I said, today the the market is up, um, not uh, substantially. Risk is on, in fact. Banks are down, but uh, I'm up about 3% today. I have a heavily risk-oriented, future-oriented portfolio. And from what I showed you yesterday, from this chronological following of our last banking crisis, once the market gets comfortable that the that the risk is off and our banking system is safe, then the market rebounds relative to what's coming in the future. And I believe what's coming in the future is artificial intelligence, genome sequencing, genome editing, and our lives are going to change substantially. Electric vehicles, solar energy, we're going to move into a whole new era of what the the world economy looks like. We're bringing manufacturing back to the United States. Our big tech companies are scaling back and, and becoming more economical, which will come to affect their bottom line. We just learned this morning that uh, Meta is laying off about as many people as they did last year. So we should see some efficiencies coming into the market. We've just got to get the fear out of the market. Now, as I said, Joe made a short announcement this morning in which basically said that anybody who has money in any of our banks, your money is safe. That is some level of of security. But the problem is not cured if, in fact, Jerome keeps raising interest rates and treasuries pay better than the banks who still have money uh, that is becoming our bonds that are losing value as he continues to raise interest rates. I propose that this morning Joe would put on his big boy pants and come out and say, in fact, I'm lowering interest rates because I I've recognized I've put our banking system in jeopardy. I've putting I've put young women and and children in jeopardy. I've put the poor. I've made them poorer. I've created more need for food lines. I've put created an atmosphere of not recession, but depression. And I didn't recognize it isn't a normal economy. I didn't recognize this is not the same economy that your grandfather had. This is an economy that was affected by a pandemic that forced people not to work, that the government went and and recklessly put nine trillion dollars into the market. Twenty percent of it is estimated, and I'm I think that's conservative. It went to fraud. I mean, even Brett Farr built a volleyball stadium in Mississippi for his daughter off of your relief money. Come on, it, and and he's just the tip of the iceberg. So our government is screwed up. We don't have adequate people. We have a bunch of old people who work on old philosophies, old monetary theories, and we need to get them out of there. They don't know what the hell they're doing, as was evidenced by what just happened over this weekend. This was caused 
by Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen and their proceed their, their their proceeders because they do not understand monetary policy. I mean, some of the clowns that we put into office are just ridiculous. And we need to take responsibility as citizens to clean up our government and to put talented people, pay them good salaries, get the corruption out, get the graft out, and run this company like the biggest business in the world because that's what it is. And we need to reward or put talent in the positions where it's needed. It's not being done. I mean, when Joe showed up this morning and said, I'm firing the managers of the banks, and then did not mention Jerome and Janet. I just about, yeah. So come on, let's recognize it's our responsibility to put talented people in the positions to make good investment decisions, just like what we're trying to do. 